I go to all the trouble last year to build a retro gaming setup with a tube TV, and the TV dies in a few short months. My usual complete and utter lack of luck. Whatever. Epic Fear. The Wacky World of Multimedia J. Well, it was fun while it lasted, and by lasted, I mean only a couple of months. I really feel bad for this poor TV. It barely had a chance to even be a TV. This is my old tube TV, for those of you who don't know, from the 2000s, back when I first started the YouTube channel. And uh, it saw only light use for consoles like the GameCube and PS2 back in the 2000s. Then I got my first flat panel TV in 2008, and this thing went to the folks' place and they kept it in their basement until middle of last year when it finally saw some usage again in my retro setup. And then I noticed that it died a couple of weeks ago, so I left it, I actually left it unplugged so that hopefully all the stuff discharged out of the circuits. I don't want to get fried because I want to pop this thing open and See if maybe, just maybe, there's like a fuse or something that just wore out. And we'll try that before junking this thing for good. So I'm hoping it's just that. This poor thing barely got a chance to be a TV. Uh, it'd be sad to see it go, even though it is pretty much outdated being a tube. And even this thing's having trouble focusing on it. <laughs> Alright, well, let's clean up the mess a bit and spin this thing around. And for the first time ever, take the back off. Maybe we'll see what took this thing down. Sanyo Manufacturing, Forest City, Arkansas. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Manufactured July 2005. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm gonna need nut drivers to get this off. Do I even still have nut drivers? I haven't needed those in an extremely long time. All right, this doesn't look all that bad. There's the suction cup with the high voltage stuff. There's the flyback transformer down there. There is, over by the power supply, a fuse and can we see it through the camera I see blobs well, let me see if I can get that out and see what that looks like so I mean some fuses they can blow simply because they're just old so I'm wondering if I could replace it with a similar fuse and if that one blows then the TV's no good look at all these old-fashioned electronics here even from something from the mid 2000s like resistors popping up off the board <laughs> What I like that I'm seeing, though, is that all the capacitors look pretty flat, including the ones around the power supply. This com computer. <laughs> Old habits die hard, baby. This television is contemporary to Capacitor Plague. Came out just a little bit afterwards, so I'm glad I don't see any orange goo on any of those caps. Let's see if I can get that fuse out. Alright, continuity test. The fuse looks like it has solder blobs in it and these test leads are a little kind of uh, worn. I don't use this meter very often. Does this thing still work? Sort of. A little bit of oxidation on the test leads. But if we can get this sound to go off, that means the fuse still works and the TV is dead. All right, let's see if we can get this thing to make noise. Uh, da, 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 da. There you go. That is the sound of an old tube TV flatlining and the end of the CRT era at Jay's Geek House. Sad. The dream was so short-lived and that TV barely even got to be a TV, but I can see the filament in there in between the things that look like solder bulbs. So the fuse was still good. The TV is toast. Well, TV's back together. Power is on, plugged in and everything. For those of you that thought I was faking it, you can also grab this remote that I programmed for it as well. So you know, that it's absolutely, it's not just a dead power button. The whole thing died. Probably something with the power supply or some corrosion somewhere on the board or something like that. But it's just, looking at a tube TV like this for the first time in years kind of did remind me of why we got away from these with the flicker and the distortion and stuff like that. I know that some people liked their tube experiences, warts and all, 
but I really think the best thing that Tubes brought to the table was just a lack of input lag. Now, hook us up with something like that on a more modern form of technology, and people wouldn't be trying to keep these things alive as long as humanly possible. So this is going to get recycled over at the town's recycling place for old electronics, so I know there's some folks, some 9-to-5ers, that might want to fix these things up. I'm not going to. I'm not chasing the past through try. I mean, this is basically something that I like to do with electronics anyways. I'm always talking about how I hate e-waste, and I want to use everything till it quits. This TV quit. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Just too bad it cost me like 200 something dollars back in 2005. You do the math for inflation. All right, let's get this thing out of here. Here it is, the last tube standing. <laughs> It gets sound, and it still gets a picture. Many, many years older than the Sanyo, and yet this one is the one that still works. <laughs> Made in South Korea, baby. You know, we need to give South Korea more credit. They're pretty awesome when it comes to electronics. I'm not just saying that as a Samsung fan, but this is uh, Daewoo circa 1990, 1991 still working and picture still all right it just unfortunately it only has an analog tuner you know what let's humor things a bit if i wanted to use this and leave this here what would i need for a setup <laughs> yeah i suppose this could work if i really wanted to go retro with this but there's one thing that bothers me about using a tube TV in this day and age, and that is, we really did get away from this crap for a reason. <laughs> you can see the distortion down in, you see the distortion down in the corner. Of course, this thing also, it's always been a little off to the side, so I'm losing the picture on the left, stuff like that. Plus, it's washed out. And for those of you that weren't around back in the days when you used an RF TV, like I'm using with my little RF modulator up top, you had to tune in to your console and basically you could only get the picture just so by turning the tuning knob because you were basically tuning into an analog television signal of your console. It was low quality and it's something I've been thinking about a lot with some of this nostalgia and whatnot. Did we really like this stuff because it was good or did we just like it because it's all we had? I mean going back to my old childhood TV with what I have nowadays, even though this is retro and some people would tell me I have to play these old games on tube TVs, I just feel like it's too big of a step backwards. So I'm going to bring in another TV that isn't a tube TV, but I think it would fit in a little better here. The TV I have nowadays is too new to properly support older consoles like the Super Nintendo. However, my original Samsung from 2008, assuming it hasn't finished cooking itself, is much better at this kind of thing. Plus, it'll be a lot easier to fix than that tube would have been. Yay! I ran through the level way too fast without getting anything. <laughs> oh, man. This is the game I had to beat in one sitting because the rental I borrowed way back in the day had a dead save battery. <laughs> So here's something I also don't miss. Back in the day, you're trying to stay up late and play video games. Your, your parents think you're asleep. On one of these old TVs, you'd go to go to bed, and if you weren't careful... Oh, that was pretty tame. But usually back in my day, you get a big loud... <laughs> until you turn the TV off. Crap! Oh no! Because oftentimes the TV would be louder than everything else. <laughs> I told you to go to bed! Why aren't you sleeping? Whatever. An old familiar screen. And for some people, an even older familiar screen. There we go. Super Mario World, and the screen's not rattling. Just trying to display the image of the old Super Nintendo resolution. 
This TV always seemed to do very well for gaming. It's one of the reasons why I picked it back in 2008. Basically, the, res the response time was way faster than the other TVs were doing, even outside of game mode. So it worked out pretty well. Also has tons of inputs, including lots of legacy inputs. Although a retro tink would probably be a lot better than this, but if you want to have a console going directly to an LCD TV, it might as well be this dinosaur. This thing was closer to the technology than what we have today. So, ugh, buttons are half worn out on this old SNES controller, but not the ones that count. I mean, yeah, I get LCD artifacts and everything. I do get LCD artifacts, but the input lag's not that big of a deal. I think one of the things that throws me off is just how big the screen was. This size screen, even playing in square screen with bars on the side, is bigger than most of the TVs I would have played Nintendo on back in the day. So I think it's looking at a screen this big that's throwing me off at least as much as the input lag. But otherwise, we're in pretty decent shape here. Let's see. Donut Plates 1. That's not very hard. It's not very hard. Just don't look at the camera. <laughs> Oops. Getting thrown off already by this. With all the little differences. Screens drawn differently and things like that. But hey, you know, this is probably the best TV I have in terms of hooking old consoles directly up to something. Well, let's see. Let's see if I can gain altitude using the old flying trick in Super Mario World. Looks like, I mean, this is something I would screw up if the input lag got too terrible. See, I used to be able to, just, I had this down to a science. I could basically fly through the whole level without ever coming down. <laughs> well, let's see if I get off the top of the screen. Yeah, there we go. Oops. <laughs> a little off on that one. This is old, old. This is 1993-94 controller. Ooh. Something else I used to do, I used to spin in midair in order to change direction. Like that. <laughs> it's been too long, man. I'm also not used to the game being in stereo, because the Daewoo TV was mono. <laughs> too bad the... Too bad the screen can't display that many sprites. Imagine how many thousands of points that would be with feathers. But, either way. Yeah, it's perfectly doable. It's just a little more modern. The TV's more contemporary than the Xbox 360, but it's closer to displaying the older systems correctly than today's TVs. There we go. How about a little apples to apples comparison since, since we were playing Yoshi's Island last go around? This isn't too bad, actually. Except for, uh. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, you were just looking for an excuse to get Yoshi high. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm usually much better at this. <laughs> yeah, I come back to this level on purpose just to mess around. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> How did they let us play this game as kids? What was Nintendo thinking? <laughs> All things considered, though, this is definitely a usable setup. I just like that the older TV is better at handling the older signal than what's out here today. So, it looks like an LCD, but it's a nice big screen, and the latency's not all that bad, actually. I could probably play this. Probably would be a lot better if I was more centered to the screen instead of trying to film a YouTube video. Regardless, though, that will be the end of the story for now with this retro setup. There's plenty of other projects I could be working on right now. Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by. <sighs> well, folks, as always, the joke's on me. Immediately after I finished filming what I thought was the end of this video, the old Samsung TV from 2008 does the white screen of death. Yep, everything's inverted like some photographic negative. That's a problem with either the power supply or the T-Con board. I've seen this in monitors many, many times. The question is, do I really want to dig around in this thing and look at the power supply capacitors or find out where the T-Con board is? How much does a T-Con board even cost? It's like... Or should I just junk this thing? It had a good run. 
it's been all over the place. It was never very power efficient to begin with, and it was having problems with starting itself six or seven times before. So it was already having problems before I brought it over here. What can I say? It had a good run. It had a good run. Could theoretically look in back of this thing, but I think I'd be better off just getting my space back. Get a little more space around here and junk this thing. And just buy some upscaler boxes for hooking things up to the newer TV. This, though, ugh, why do I even bother? Whatever. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by. Epic Fear.